When you think about innovative devices from LG, some of you will immediately remember the LG Wing, which was released a couple of years ago with a very cool swiveling form factor. But those of us who are slightly older know that LG was always into crazy one way or the other. They didn't always get it right, but they always had something interesting to show for it. And this device is certainly one of LG's really cool experiments. This is the LG Crystal, released back in 2009 with a lot of cool tricks. So let's talk about all of its quirks and features to see what made it special for its time. Starting with the hardware and what looks like an ordinary touchscreen device couldn't be any less ordinary. On the front you have a 3 inch TFT display with a resolution of 480 by 800 pixels with a capacitive touchscreen and that resolution was very high for its time. Above the display is the speaker which also acted as the loudspeaker. Under the display you have three capacitive touchscreen buttons with the call key menu button and end call key. On the left you had the micro USB port which was used for charging as well as connecting headphones and it was also hidden under a flap to protect it from dust. The top housed the lock and unlock key which was also the power button and on the right you had the volume rocker keys at the very top and a camera shutter key. While the bottom only housed the latch key to open the back battery cover. Turn it around though and the device starts revealing some of its secrets. It just says transparent at the top and you can even see the battery inside because the back cover is transparent at the bottom. But check this out. Yes, the LG Crystal is a sliding device and has a totally transparent T9 keypad. You can see that the numbers are etched on the glass and the whole sliding mechanism is surrounded by a metallic frame. This honestly looks like magic. Not only that, but this transparent keypad is also a capacitive touchscreen which can be used to operate the device alongside the main touchscreen. The sliding back cover hides an 8 megapixel camera with a selfie mirror underneath in order to protect them. And the sliding mechanism is super satisfying and very nicely made. Unfortunately, the battery on this device doesn't work anymore properly, but I can still power it on if I connect a micro USB to the device to keep it charged at all times. And this is what happens to your charging cable if you have a cat. Let's power it on now by clicking on the top button. The user interface on this phone is no less interesting than the hardware itself. This phone is running on LG's own user interface which is called S-Class and it's quite cool even though it looks pretty old fashioned now. You had a total of four home screens, one which showcases all your widgets, one which showcases all your contacts, one for multimedia purposes, and one for your favorite apps. Clicking on this button reveals something else that's quite cool, which is the cube interface that LG was using. So here you're pretty much interacting with the cube, which can interchange between all of your home screens. And it even supports kinetic scrolling, so you could play around with it endlessly. Long press on this button and you can access the multitasking menu and something else that's quite cool, which is called the touchpad shortcuts. Here you can assign a gesture to quickly access different applications. So let's try the triangle for the web browser. These gestures only work if you apply them to the keypad. Let's give it a shot. Take a look at this. And I am at the web browser. How cool is that? And you can even use the keypad to navigate through the different home screens by swiping here. And the keypad itself is somehow backlit and I'm guessing it's by the use of indirect lighting, but it is super cool. So unless you're actually in the dialer, pressing the buttons won't result in entering numbers. And the cube can also be controlled by using the touchscreen on the keypad. You can even pinch to zoom using the keypad's capacitive screen. Accessing the menu also reveals a couple of interesting things. All the apps are organized based on their own criteria. So you have the communication apps, the multimedia apps, the utilities, and the settings. And instead of having different screens, you could swipe between the different roles. Let's take a picture pretty quickly. User interface is pretty basic, and the device supports capturing videos in a 480p resolution. 
So what were the issues plaguing the LG Crystal? For a start, even though the display has a nice resolution, you would struggle using it outdoors because it just wasn't that bright. The 8 megapixel camera on the back was considered mediocre at best at taking pictures. The phone didn't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so we can say that Apple in a way copied LG. And the web browser didn't support flash, which means that videos couldn't be played from the browser. Oh, and by the way, the phone also comes with Google Maps, although you can't use it properly because the phone doesn't have a GPS receiver. For its time, the LG Crystal wasn't the most powerful, most capable, or most advanced smartphone. However, it was definitely one of the most interesting experiments out there, and some people would just pick it up just because of how cool the form factor is, and I totally wouldn't blame them. But that's exactly what makes it a lot more memorable than most devices that were released back then, and why it's featured on this channel. And this is the type of device that we sorely miss these days, in part because LG left the phone market, which definitely makes me feel bit sad. Anyway, that's it for me. If you want to check out more cool devices from the past, check out my nostalgia series, and I shall see you in the next one.